So when it comes to 2023, I think we've learned three things thus far this year. First and foremost, I'm not a Nintendo YouTuber. The second thing is I want people to subscribe. So I hit 500,000 subscribers this year. But the third thing is that Nintendo is going to Nintendo like this company has to be one of the most hard headed companies in the entire world, because what you want them to necessarily do isn't what they're necessarily going to do. If anything, they might do the complete opposite of it. Now, yesterday, we, of course, talked about the whole Doug Bowser quote about the Nintendo Switch 2, the Nintendo Switch successor. And instead of giving this system to us, a system that is obviously going to be more powerful and more capable, now we have to worry about some weird gimmick attached to it. Is it even going to be a successor to the Nintendo Switch? Is it going to be something completely different that's not going to play our old games? People like to say that it's going to have backwards compatibility, but... I'm not 100% sure on that, and I don't think you should be either. But I think one of the bigger questions for this year was tied in with The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, there are a lot of questions that go into this game, such as, where the hell is the blowout of information of this game? Like, I get it. You want to ramp up anticipation, you want to ramp up hype, but it seems like there are people that are starting to get a bit tired of waiting. Now, me personally, I'm not one of those people. I see people online saying, oh, you know, this is an asset flip. What took so long this game? You know, why is Nintendo not showing this game? Why isn't this game going to be at PAX East? Are they ashamed of this game? This, that, the other. And people are genuinely concerned about the game. Now, I'm not in that camp. I'm not in that position because I still think the game is, is going to be awesome. I just think it's kind of peculiar that this is the way that they're handling obviously one of the biggest games of 2023 i think this game starfield and spider-man 2 are you know right there with the top titles for 2023 in terms of anticipation in terms of hype and in terms of you know what they're going to produce and what they're going to bring to the marketplace but there's something very interesting attached to the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom that no other nintendo game can say that it has attached to it and that is the 70 dollar price tag which took a lot of people by surprise a lot of people had egg on their face because they always said oh nintendo will never do that and then they did it and then they're just like oh well it's, i mean it just happens you know it's a whole big controversy it's a whole big topic when you look at you know video game pricing and i get it people don't understand why there's outrage towards it but i think i think the main problem with nintendo doing this and the timing that they're doing this is they're having so much success. They're selling, you know, millions of systems. They expect this new Nin or the current Nintendo Switch to just be a huge seller for this year. And there's more stuff on the horizon, according to Doug Bowser. But for some reason, in the middle of the generation, you're upping the price of your first party games, at least on a case by case basis. That's what they said in their initial statement when asked about it. And it's it's just very strange because we've never really seen this before, especially in the middle of a console generation, at least in the modern era of gaming. Well, in an interview done with the Associated Press, they actually asked Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser about this price hike with the $70 game for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And he actually gave a more detailed explanation than we have gotten so far from aside from just a single sentence. So I want to go over this information with you guys and then just sort of give my opinion on it. So Doug said the following about this good old Dougie Douglas. If you look at what the game has to offer. I think fans will find this is an incredibly full, deeply immersive experience. The price point reflects the type of experience that fans can expect when it comes to playing this particular game. This isn't a price point that we'll necessarily have on all our titles. It's actually a fairly common pricing model either here or in the Europe or other parts of the world, where pricing may vary depending on the game itself. This line of reasoning is, is interesting for really a myriad of reasons because obviously nintendo keeps saying this isn't the standard going forward and it doesn't appear to be the standard going forward you know when you look at a game like pikmin 4 that game is going to be priced at 60 dollars but the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom is a 70 dollar game now doug tries to say that this is you know something common as far as pricing of games is concerned and i i guess that's that's sort of you know true in the fact that you know you're not expecting to pay sixty dollars or seventy dollars for you know a new indie title or something like that depending on you know the the budget behind it and the resourcing behind it and whatnot but I, when it comes to individual games on a platform 
that are first party games and you have to wonder about if this game's going to be $60 or $70 and there's really no rhyme or reason for it that's where I think things get a little bit murky I think people I honestly feel like people would be a bit more understanding if Nintendo just went all $70 with their first party games and they just rode that wave that other companies are doing now there is some risk and reward with that um you know there are games that a lot of people feel like that when they launch at 70 dollars you expect a higher level of quality than you do at the 60 dollar price point and we are seeing games that are launching at 70 dollars that are not big commercial successes like the companies wanted them to be callisto protocol which is a game that i enjoyed and forespoken definitely come to mind and i feel like that 70 dollar price tag just made the, the 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 anticipation for those games much much higher but the thing is i don't think anyone's gonna doubt the quality of you know tears of the kingdom but to say you know it's an incredibly full deep immersive experience this price point reflects the type of experience that fans can expect when it comes to playing this particular game does that mean that your other games your 60 dollar games are like half-assed like I've gotten tons of enjoyment out of games that have been $40 from Nintendo games like, um, you know, clubhouse games. And yeah, it doesn't have all the, the visual bells and whistles of other stuff, but you can't say that that game isn't more deep than something like Mario Strikers Battle League, which is severely lacking in tons of things. So it's a weird, it's a, it's a weird thing to do. I still happen. I still think that this is due to a cartridge. I don't care what anyone says and people like make fun of me for saying that and, and that's fine you know but this is using a 32 gigabyte cartridge which Nintendo has never used before for a first party game I think that cartridge size is what's making this extra ten dollars you know be a thing I don't you know I, I don't see anything with tears of the kingdom and it's like this game needs to be more expensive than what it is and like I said I think if this was just a common price point if the seventy dollars was a common price point I don't think people would be as upset with it they would be upset with the initial shock of it but I don't know you know it, it, it's very strange that this is happening in the middle of the generation because you have to wonder what does that mean for the future does that mean that Zelda games and Mario games are going to be you know $70 games what about a Yoshi game is that worth $70 like how does Nintendo sort of determine what the price point of these games are going to be obviously this game is going to be huge this game is going to be massive and it's the most expensive game that nintendo has ever produced but i mean you can afford it you know let's say this game for some reason completely flops commercially which i mean it's not going to but let's say that it does is it really any skin off your back you know are you are you losing anything off of it because of that so I think it's going to be interesting to see this case by case basis and then of course you have you know i was going to wrap it up but i just thought of something else you have the whole thing that it's like if this game isn't running at like 1080p 60 which i don't think it will be why is it a 70 dollars game you know what i'm saying like if there's performance issues if there's slowdown and glitches because you got to remember when the initial breath of the wild came out it ran better in handheld mode than it did docked and nintendo had to do a performance update unlike they're doing with Pokemon to to rectify that and to clean that up you know if if this game is you know $70 for a game that's not running at 1080p 60 frames per second in 2023 I'm not a I'm not a graphics whore you know you guys know that I, I play old video games and you know things like P I'm not big into P I'm not big into you know I'm as long as the game is smooth to me as long as the game feels good you know that's 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 good enough for me but there are a lot of people who don't think that way and part of me doesn't think that way because you're at you're asking me to pay a premium price for this game seventy dollars but the technical experience like are you gonna charge seventy dollars for a pokemon game imagine if pokemon scarlet and violet was a seventy dollar game that that broken shell of a video game that somehow sold 15 million i don't know it's going to be very interesting i think it would have been smarter for them to just do 70 on everything you know if you if you want to get into the 70 dollar ball game just go in it man just go in it balls deep this is how it's going to be and you know instead of wondering on a case-by-case -case basis and then sort of judging the quality of a first party nintendo game by it is it you know 40 dollars? is it a 60 dollars, or is it a 70 dollars game you're like making a tier system within yourself you know putting limitations on yourself i don't know i think it's very interesting and that's why I've been talking about it. So maybe you think this is interesting. And if you do think this is interesting, hey, 
that's that's cool I'm, I'm glad you thought it was interesting so give me your feedback in the comment section down below do you buy dougie's you know explanation that it's a big game and it's a big full immersive experience which means that 60 dollars games and 40 dollars games aren't immersive experiences comparatively speaking or do you think that it's just a bunch of you know typical nintendo of america fluff and puff and it really means nothing because nintendo of america means nothing they're a marketing company and a translation company this is what doug bowser does he wakes up twice a year to do some interviews twiddles twirls a pencil around at his desk and then goes and takes a nap and hibernates and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button like comment and share hit the bell notification as well so you don't miss any uploads of mine i upload a lot even though i'm not a nintendo youtuber i do talk about nintendo and as always i'll catch you guys on the next video later